Hey, we are recording a problem on heating and cooling curves. And right now the baseball team is practicing in the hallway, so we'll see how this goes. Bottom line, our first problem is how much heat energy is required to heat 120 grams of ice from negative 10 degrees Celsius to 120 degrees Celsius. If you look, if you don't have a heating and cooling curve in front of you, you sure should think about a heating and cooling curve, which is sitting right in front of you, here on this paper. And you should think of this is the area that's a solid, this is the area that's a liquid, and this is the area that's a gas. Now what do you have? You have 120 grams of ice, and you know this is ice because, you know, it's water because what happens? It's zero, it's heating and cooling here, it's freezing, right, and melting. And at 100 degrees right here, what's it doing? It's going from a liquid to a gas. It's boiling and condensing, okay, or evaporating. So let's look at this. You have 120 grams of ice. You're at negative 10 degrees Celsius, which is down here, okay? It's right here on your graph. In this area, you're actually heating up from negative 10 to zero. That's one step. Then your second step is to go from zero degrees, a very, very cold temperature, along this line to zero degrees. Well, you sure aren't changing your temperature, are you? But what's happening right here? This is the part of your graph where you're melting. And that's not a really good pen, but you get the idea. <laughs> it's melting and you're going into, move this pen over and see if I can go smaller. There you go. Sorry, no, before I went to, okay. So, you're melting, and this part right here is called what? Heat of fusion, isn't it? Okay, so we can abbreviate that as delta H of fusion, okay? And this pen's not working very well. At this point, you are at zero degrees, and what are you doing? you're going from zero all the way uphill and you're heating 120 grams of water, remember, okay? And 120 grams of water from zero all the way to 100 degrees. That's going to take a lot of energy. If you think about it, remember in class we said anytime you're heating up, you're going uphill right here, you are using specific heat. So here you're going to use a specific heat problem here you're going to use a specific heat problem. And if you look, you're going to use it one other place too, aren't you? On this part of the graph. Okay? But we're not there yet. So we've taken what? This 10 degree ice, negative 10, heated it up to zero, melted it, overcome the intermolecular forces, heated it up to 100. Now what? What's this area of the graph called right here? This right here is called heat of fusion. Excuse me, not heat of fusion. The baseball team distracted me. <laughs> Delta H or enthalpy heat of vaporization. This line right here is where you're taking 100 degree water and you're evaporating it and forming a gas. Along this line, the intermolecular forces, the forces that keep all that water together in a beaker, are overcome. And then you can take 100 degree water and heat it up to 120 degrees pretty hot. Okay? So that's what you need to think of when you look at this problem. You need to realize that it's a heat of fusion, heat of vaporization, heating curve problem, that you're going from something that's super cold to something that's super warm, and this is the process. So, these are the steps you need to break them down into. Your ice heating from negative 10 to 0 degrees Celsius Step number one involves this part of your graph. And that part of your graph is going to be specific heat. Ice melting at zero degrees is going to be this part of your graph. And this is going to be heat of fusion problem. Liquid water heating from zero to 100 degrees is going to be this part of a graph, a specific heat problem. Liquid water boiling at 100 degrees is going to be in this area, a heat of vaporization problem. 
and steam heating from 100 to 120 again is a specific heat. So as you can see there are five steps. This step right here specific heat, this step right here heat diffusion, this step right here specific heat, for liquid this step right here heat of vaporization, this step right here another specific heat for steam. Okay? So again there's your steps one two three four five. So let's get started on the math. Step one ice heating from negative 10 to 0 degrees Celsius. That involves again this area right here. That's what we're looking at. Okay? Now what we need to do is whenever you're climbing a hill there's kinetic energy involved you need to go ahead and do a specific heat problem. Q equals mc delta t. So in this instance I know I have 120 grams of water right? I know that the specific heat, and I can look this up, it's usually given to me in a problem, it's 2.06 joules per grams degree Celsius. I know the change in temperature. If you look, it's from negative 10 to 0. That's a temperature change of positive 10. It's going up. It's going in this direction. You can look at your graph right here too. Okay? So I'm going to put positive 10 degrees Celsius. And that when I multiply it together on my calculator, I come out with 2, 4, 7, 2 joules. Because my Celsius cancels, my grams cancel, and I'm left with joules right here. Okay? So we're going to save that number and we're going to use it later. Now you need to think because if you're solving for the heat overall, you're going to have to change that. You're going to have to compare it to everything else. Okay, so our next step right here. Now where are we? We just did this section, didn't we? So we need to think about where we are in our problem. Here we are, ice melting, keyword melting. That's this section, which is heat of fusion. Right? Okay. Delta H of fusion. And delta H of fusion for water is 6.02 kilojoules per mole. Every once in a while you see this listed kilojoules per gram, but in most instances it's kilojoules per mole. And if you look, it says we need to do moles of water then times heat of fusion, which is in kilojoules per mole what's going to happen is our mole is going to cancel out and we're left with kilojoules, which is what we want for Q. Okay, now let's look and see what happens. We had 120 grams, didn't we, of water. And what we need to do is we need to change grams of water to moles of water. So I'm going to go ahead and put grams down here and moles up here. And in one mole there's 18 0.02 grams of water. That's because in water I have 1.01 plus 1.01 grams of hydrogen because there's two of them and 16 grams of water, excuse me, of oxygen which adds up to be 18.02 grams for one mole of water. Here's your review for moles. Now grams is going to cancel which takes me over to having moles and now I can go ahead and plug into my equation and I can use 6.02 kilojoules per every one mole. If you notice, I have more than one mole, don't I? My answer to this part of the problem, when I do my math, should be something like 40.09 kilojoules. And again, we need to keep that in mind because that's only this step. We're now ready to go to step three. Step three involves liquid water heating. That means we're in this section right here and we're going from zero to 100 degrees. Again, we're going in a positive direction and our change is 100 degrees. So this is our temperature change. 
is a positive 100 degrees Celsius. What's our specific heat? Well, specific heat for water, liquid water, is 4.18 joules per grams degrees Celsius. And mass? Well, that hasn't changed. Our states of matter have changed, but our mass hasn't. And so 120 times 4.18 times 100 is going to give me 50160 joules. Now, we're at liquid water boiling at 100 degrees Celsius. Where are we on our graph? We've gone from here to here, specific heat, here to here, heat of fusion, here to here, specific heat of water. Now, we're sitting right here. We have 100 degree water, 120 grams of it. Okay, again, you notice there's the word moles. So you need to take 120 grams of water and you need to change it to moles. So again, we put one mole here because the word grams goes down here to cancel out of 18.02 grams. And now I need to use heat of fusion because I need to go from here to here. Heat of vaporization, I'm sorry, I keep saying that. Heat of vaporization, delta H of vaporization, I need to go from here to here. I need to take water from 100 degrees to 100 degrees steam. Okay? So, my heat of vaporization, I can say it right now, <laughs> for every one mole, takes 40.7, quite a bit more, doesn't it? Kilojoules per mole. That's a lot of energy. That shows you how much uh, heat water can stand and how much it can take and why it has such a high specific heat here. Imagine how much energy. And look at the difference in the lines, too. It doesn't take as much energy. And here it takes a lot. All right, so what do we need to do? You need to multiply, and when you multiply, you get this number, 271.03 kilojoules. Why kilojoules? Because grams have canceled, moles have canceled, and I'm left with kilojoules. And that's your answer for this part. So if we continue, we've traveled through one, two, three, four steps, which we're going to add up in a minute. And now we're sitting here. We have 120 grams of steam, and we're going to heat it from 100 degrees to 120. That's going in this direction. It's a positive direction. And you take the difference between 100 and 120. And remember, we're doing final, right? Temperature final minus temperature initial. That's what we've been doing this whole time. It's going to be 120 minus 100, which is a positive 20 degrees Celsius. Okay? Now I've been bad about significant figures in this one. We'll come back and look at that. But not in this problem right now on uh, recording. For right now, I'm doing this as a practice recording and also to take you through this problem. Okay? So, what do we have? We have 120 grams still of water, right? Except, where are we? We got steam, don't we? Okay? Mass hasn't changed, though. What's the specific heat? Specific heat for steam is 2.02 .02 joules per grams degree Celsius. Okay? And we're going to do what? Heat it up positive 20 degrees. Okay? And when I do that, I get 4848 four joules. Again, because my grams cancel, my degrees Celsius cancel, and left with joules. So, what do I need to do? I need to add all these up. For my first part, I have 2472 joules. For my second step, I have 40.09 kilojoules. For my third step, I have 50160, this pen's not working out, is it, joules. From this step, I have 271.03 kilojoules. 
Then for my fifth step, I have four eight, four eight joules. If I'm finding the total heat energy, okay, I can go ahead and put that in joules, or I can put that in kilojoules. If I was to put it in kilojoules, that would mean I'd have to have change all these, wouldn't it? So this would be 4.848 kilojoules. This would be 50.160 kilojoules. And this would be 2.472 kilojoules. I'm going to take these numbers right here. This, 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 and this. I'm going to add them up because I've changed this and changed this and changed this. My answer in kilojoules is 368.6. So when you think about this problem, you've got to think of doing this, which is specific heat, this, which is heat of fusion, and I'm using this specific heat here of ice, aren't I? Heat of fusion. Here I'm using specific heat for liquid water, right? Solid, liquid. <laughs> and this I'm going to use heat of vaporization. There I said it right. How about that? Okay. going from hot water to steam. And here I'm going to go ahead and use specific heat for steam, which is a gas. And that's how you do this kind of problem.